folks that picked up. Welcome to exciting high school football action on Niagara Frontier Cable TV. This evening, we bring to you a very exciting Division III battle between the Lewiston Porter Lancers and the Niagara Wheatfield Falcons. And of course, the Lancers from Lewiston Porter. Well, this is Bob Kaczynski along with Bob Laurie, your play-by-play -play announcer, and we're out here for what should prove to be a very exciting high school football game. Yes, Bob, this game should determine, or go a long way to determine, who's going to represent uh, Division Three of Section 6 in the Federation playoffs uh, next month, November 13th, at Rich Stadium. You're looking at the captains of the two teams, and before we get this football game underway, we're going to take a commercial break. Victory for Lewiston Porter. Pledge, and then the All right, we're back and almost ready for action. We have beautiful facilities up here at Terry Harvey Field. It looks like a very overcast day, and it may the weather may have a factor or be a factor in this particular game, Bob. Uh, you're right, Bob, and it seems that uh, the last several years that Lewis and Porter and Niagara Wheatfield have faced off. Uh, there's been some uh, bad weather conditions. I remember two years ago of extremely muddy field right here at Terry Harvey Field, in which uh, Lewis and Porter won by three to zero score on a Meridian uh, field goal. Now you're looking down at the field now where our national anthem is about to be played. You've heard the national anthem and the Section 6 Sportsmanship Pledge. We're going to have the starting lineups as Bill Ross, the PA announcer, will be introducing the football players before the game. Here comes number 91, Greg Voise, onto the field. Outstanding defensive player for Lewiston Porter. Here's Glenn Castick. Two weeks ago, Bob, he was the most valuable player for Lewiston Porter in their game against Canisius. Matt Sinoyan, who delivered a very telling blow to Al Morano last week in that football game between the two schools, Lou Port and Niagara Falls High School. Here's Brian Tasselmeyer. Gets a good pass rush out of Tasselmeyer. David Reed, number 55, one of the linebackers. And Todd Freshlock, and also an outstanding at the outside linebacker position. Linebacker for four, Lewis DePorter. Pete Sikowski. And Pete Sikowski had a fine game against Niagara and Falls High School. Outside linebacker position, number 58, Greg King. And to complete the 4-4, four, four, here is Greg King, number 58. He's also the center on offense. Greg LaBarbera. Greg LaBarbera, who is number 31, and also Steve plays on offense. Steve Hesse. And a very fine... At the other defensive, half defensive player, the along with Steve Porzak, who is the backup quarterback, number 15. And little Anthony Tomei, number 21, the wide receiver. And, of course, Coach Harry Lawler. Now, Bob, I'll let you do the Niagara Wheatfield starters. Very good, Bob. Starting out with the offense. Their big tight end, number 88, Todd Treichler. At the left tackle position. Senior, number 73, Laverne At left, left tackle, 
very imposing on defense as well as offense number 73, Laverne Rowling. Here's Rich Donner, number 66, also on the offensive line. Their center, number 99, Don Basili. Dave Penku, number 75, also at the offensive line. Mill Cram. Also a standout on defense. Number 20, sophomore Rich Vincent. Here's Vincent, number 20, their kicking specialist as well as a wide receiver. Number 41, Dom Cincetti. Big Dom Cincetti, number 41, the fullback. At the tailback position, senior, number 40, Larry Kaminska. And Larry Kaminska, who's done an outstanding job rushing for the Falcons this year, number 40. Senior, number 43, Jimmy Krull. Jimmy Krull, senior, back in the lineup, number 43. And their junior quarterback, number six, Jim Segura. And our next coach starting his 13th season, Coach Armin Ace Cacciatore. And there's Coach Armin Cacciatore being announced, and of course his staff of John LaChance, Lee Wallace, Fran Haggerty, Dan Johnson, and Alan Fogel. And I think it's fitting, Bob, that uh, the Niagara Weefield offense and the Lewis and Porter defense were both announced because I think that's the key to this ballgame. Uh, exactly, Robert. This should be the, the telling points from both teams because the offense of Niagara Wheatfield, they won the game last year 21 to nothing. Lewport leads in the series 13 to 5. The Falcons have a 3-0 division record. Lewport has a 2-0 division record. The Falcons are 4-0 overall and Lewport is 3-1 with that telling loss to Canisius. And as Bob mentioned, the offense for Niagara Wheatfield has been outstanding this year. Featuring Larry Kaminska, who has rushed for 100 yards in four consecutive games. And, of course, the Lewport has always been noted for their defense. And that's exactly what we're going to be looking for today, a struggle between Niagara Weefield's offense and Lewport's defense. Niagara Weefield will do the kicking to start the football game. This is a part of their game, Bob, that uh, Coach Cacciatore has been trying to work on. That's their kickoff. They have been not getting... Uh, the distance that they've they've been looking for on their kickoff, the kicks have been rather short, and uh, the coverage uh, needs a little work. And of course, in a big game like this, special teams can mean a lot. Very, very important part of high school football or any type of football are the kicking game. Maybe 30% of the game. And Cincetti, 41, who's an outstanding blocker, and you'll look for him today to lead the blocking when Kaminska carries the ball, starts the game with the kickoff. It comes upfield to Stanton, 33, and he'll run it back. And almost breaks clean. He gets the ball to the 35 and then fumbles. Stan fumble. It looks like Niagara Weefield's got it, Bob. Well, I think they gave it to uh, Lewis and Porter. All right. We were judging by the enthusiasm on the part of the Weefield players, but right. the officials make those decisions. That would, have been, a, that would have been a big play. I wonder if the inclement conditions are causing any problems to the athletes. It's very, very wet outside. And, of course, the football may be slippery when you first handle it. Walker is the quarterback. The running backs are Stanton, DeBartolome, and Johnston, who is the up man. And they go to DeBartolome, and he gets a couple yards to about the 37-yard line. It'll be second down from that point. And, Bob, you'll notice that uh, Luport will run very effectively with all three backs. Yes, I had a chance to see that game last week, Bob, that uh, you had done out at Lewiston Porter. And uh, they do mix up their running game. Uh, and they especially love that dive right up the middle, which will be interesting because that's probably the strength of Niagara Weefield's defense right up the center position there with the rolling and perhaps the linebackers. So. Let's see where they go this time. They roll to the right with the quarterback pitching back to DeBartolome, and he stopped. He didn't get anywhere. That was a nice tackle by Mill Cram on that play. Very fine defensive play by Cram, who strung the play out. Look for the pitch out when Walker started to run parallel to the line of scrimmage. Cram anticipated a pitch out and was there for the tackle. As a loss on that play of actually of a yard. So to move the ball back to the 36, it's third down. Walker may throw here. If he does throw, he likes to throw to 21 Tome. During a wishbone or a minor wishbone, they go straight ahead and they're going to get the ball maybe to the 40 yard line, but it'll be a fourth down. Stanton carried the football. They got just shy of the 40-yard line. Niagara Weefield has hopped up on defense. It'll be fourth down. That was Steve Boffman on the tackle, Bob. Last week we had a little trouble with Steve's name. We were calling him uh, Bowman, but it's Boffman, and uh, he did a fine job. He had a fine game against LaSalle as well last week. Well, the spelling, Bob, uh, might appear to be Bowman if you look at it uh, phonetically. It'll, it'll be fourth down. Johnston is the kicker. 
He stands at the 27 and kicks straight away. Let's see what the way the ball bounces now. That's going to be the telling point. It's down by Castic, 71, at the 45-yard line. And Niagara has great field position to start the football game. Right you are, Bob. They're at uh, their own 45-yard line, and the wind is blowing across the field uh, from our press box across the fields there, uh, across the way, and uh, it will not be a factor uh, as far as blowing right into the quarterback's face, but I'm sure it will have some tell on the uh, passing game. Of course, Niagara Weefield's running game has been so uh, explosive this year that their passing game really has not been their uh, main strength. We're going to look at another junior quarterback, Jimmy Segura. Of course, Walker, the Luport quarterback, is also a junior. Segura is going to throw on first down, and he intercepted, intercepted. threw it right into the defender's arm, and Luport has the ball close to the 30-yard line. Well, that's a big break for Luport right off the bat. A fresh log uh, with the interception, and uh, Segura did have Krull open and then tried to throw it to Vincent, who was the deep man, uh, but that play was read very well. They, they ran that play several times against LaSalle last week, and obviously Lewis and Porter was looking for it. Immediately the momentum turns as the ball was thrown right into Fresh Lag's hands. He couldn't miss that ball, Bob. The ball was delivered right to him. It'll be first down from the 33-yard line for Lou Porter, who gets the first break of the football game. Walker pitches back to DeBartolomeo, who tries to run wide, and he's going to be thrown for a loss at the 35-yard line. That's Scott Prohaska, number three, uh, their outstanding linebacker, junior linebacker, and he came right up and read that play. Luport has had a little trouble running that play wide. Uh, last week, LaBarbera came into the game late in the game when DiBartolomeo was hurt, and he ran the ball very well off of that play. He seems to be a little quicker than Pat, but Pat made a fine 42-yard run against Niagara Falls High School to set up their second touchdown. That's Pat DiBartolomeo, number 42. Second down. Walker on a counter to Stanton, and Stanton gets to the 34-yard line, and that's all. It's third down, and they're not moving that Niagara Wheatfield defense at all, Bob. No, that was Rich Donner on that tackle, and uh, we should mention that the field conditions, though the field's in excellent shape, I'm sure it's quite slippery after that rain that we had this morning, so uh, for the backs to make quick cuts, I don't think you'll see much of that, so the def defense may have an advantage there. That's an accurate word, slippery, because I think that's what the football might be at this point in time. Third down, Walker fumbles, and Niagara Wheatfield recovers at the 36-yard line. Steve Boffman, 54 with that recovery. So we've seen an inability of uh, the loop toward offense against that Wheatfield defense. Now we'll just see, have to see if Niagara Wheatfield's offense can uh, get on track. They've only run one offensive play. They came out throwing. Niagara Wheatfield has scored 88 points this year, given up 25. Loopport has scored 59 and given up 48. Segura came up throwing on first down and delivered the ball right to Freyschlag who had the interception. Now Niagara Wheatfield on a staunch defense has got the ball back right where they had the interception so they didn't really lose anything on that particular turnover. It's first down. The backs are very close to the quarterback. Cinchetti is extremely close. They go to the second man. That's Kaminska and he may get three yards. And you see a lot of unpiling, a lot of movement as they unpile. That's Voise on the on the stop and uh, interesting story you see Dom Cinchetti we see him going off our screen number 41 uh, Voise who just made that tackle for Luport both both uh, gentlemen outstanding wrestlers and uh, have wrestled each other numerous occasions and uh, so that'll be a matchup they'll be seeing each other hitting you'll see them hit each other out there on the field quite a bit throughout the game I would imagine you notice Cinchetti's upper body strength when he blocks he's a very fine blocker here's Kaminska going wide and a tackle Oh, it looked like he forced him out of bounds, and Comiska got a couple more yards. Looked like LaBarbera had pushed him out of bounds. Steve Porzik finally uh, knocked him out, and that's Kaminska's strength, Bob. He can uh, uh, turn that corner on the sweep, and he's picked up a majority of his runs on that. You're looking at the Niagara Weefield bench right now. You can see Coach Cacciatore right down along the 45-yard line. The ball's very close to the 45-yard line. It's going to be third down and about a yard from that point. I wonder how much that interception is going to affect uh, this junior quarterback, Segura. Well, I don't know. We'll see as the game goes on. He did. He really delivered the ball with a lot of authority, but as we said, he just missed whoever he was trying to throw the football to. We have six minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the first quarter. No score in the football game from Terry Harvey Field. Third down for Niagara Wheatfield. The Falcons have the football. Segura is the quarterback. Cinchetti, the up man, and now we got a whistle, and it may be delay of the game. They took a lot of time getting that playoff, Robert, and that may be delayed the game. Yes, it is. 
And that is that has hurt Niagara Wheatfield numerous occasions throughout the season, Bob. You see the single given. It's a five-yard penalty for delay of the game. 25 seconds in the huddle in high school football. Move the ball back to just to outside the 40-yard line where it'll still be third down, but this time they'll have to go six yards to get a first down. And a penalty may have hurt this drive. Vincent comes out here to the right. He's the pass-catching sophomore and also kicks field goals. And now Segura drops back in a shotgun. And let's see what they do here. They're in a passing formation. They get the rush from Luport. Segura starts to run out to the right. We got a flag down. We got two flags down. And outside goes Segura, and then he's knocked out of bounds, and we'll see what we're going to get for a call. Well, we've got to have holding, Bobby. We because, do have uh, holding. Number 71 for Niagara Weefield tackled his... Uh, his rusher on that occasion, and uh, that was a flagrant holding call, so that's going to put him back uh, even farther, and I'm sure they're going to uh, they're going to take it fairly uh, conservative on this next play. I doubt he's going to put a long long one up into the wind on uh, third in this early in the quarter, 6.34 to go here in the first quarter. They're going to move the ball, Bob, back to the 25-yard line. If they marked it at the 40, it should be a 15-yard penalty. And that'll put Niagara Wheatfield in a hole because it'll be it'll still be third down. But as Bob suggested, I doubt very much if they're going to open up their offense at this point. Their defense has been very sturdy. The only two times Luport has had the ball, Luport's gotten about four or five yards on six attempts with the football. But now it's going to be third down from the 24-yard line, and they have to get the ball out to the 41. So they have to go 17 yards for a first down. And you see how penalties can hurt a team. Two penalties in this drive alone have uh, cost them 20 yards. I imagine a run with Kaminska here. Let's see what they do. And they go back to throw, so we should not be second guessing. He's, he's got a man wrong. out here, Vinson, and he's got the football Look for the this. touchdown. And Kaminska was not the running back, but it was Rich Vinson who beat his man badly. What a throw by Segura. Well, An amazing shows, pass. That shows how much we know about yes, football. Yes, sir. That's why we don't coach Robert. That was a great throw by Segura. Vincent caught the ball in stride and just outran the defender. And the play covered oh, approximately 76 yards for a touchdown. A brilliant pass from Segura to Vincent. And Vince can, Vincent can really fly. You won't see a much prettier play than that, Bob. He took that over the shoulder and the outstretched hands and Segura put it right where he wanted it to keep it away from the defender. And when it looked like they were going to uh, run out of, a, out of the hole, they come up with a long touchdown pass. Vincent will attempt the extra point. Segura bobbles it. The kick is good. And Vincent is in the last five seconds come up with seven points. And I think, Bob, that Niagara Wheatfield had fooled uh, Lou Porter, lulled them into believing they were going to run the ball on third down there and then Vincent just broke clean and Segura delivered the ball for the touchdown. It looked like Vincent was his receiver all the way on that and he got good protection in the pocket and really laid out a beautiful pass. It's, it's tough to fault the defender on that because he was right on his back. It was just a great throw and a great catch. 6.23 remain in the first quarter and Niagara Wheatfield is struck very suddenly for a 7-0 lead and Vincent scored the touchdown then came back to kick the extra point even after Segura had bobbled the pass from center so the score is seven nothing now we're gonna have a new man kicking off and Bob I think you've made a point before about uh, coach Cacciatore being concerned about this game the kicking game and now he switched kickers he started with uh, Cinchetti uh, we don't have 67's number so maybe this is Basile kicking off he's changing his jerseys when he plays defense and offense so I believe this is Basile is gonna kick the ball unless he just recruited a kicker <laughs> Uh, and he, hey, they better use this guy. He gets the ball deep into Tome. gets the ball at the four-yard line. Comes up field, trips, and gets to the 16-yard line. And everything seems to be going Niagara Wheatfield's way now, Bob, after that long touchdown pass. It really changed momentum. That was a great play. A great throw by Segura. A great catch by Vincent. And the new kicker, the mysterious kicker, has come up with a very auspicious debut for Niagara Wheatfield. I think we'll see more of them. Uh, Bob thinks it's Basil, and now the, the rest of the press box agrees that it's probably Basil who did the kicking. He changes his uniforms because of the different positions he plays for Niagara Wheatfield. Walker runs inside. That's Stanton running with the ball. No, that was Johnston. Number 30 carried the football. They called it as Stanton, but Johnston is 30. 33 is Stanton. 
he carried the ball to the 19-yard line. Stanton is the uh, deeper back in the in the offense, and Johnston usually runs that quick dive up the middle. It's second down from the 19. Johnston is a very, very strong running back. There he is, directly behind quarterback Walker. And a quick pitch to LaBarbera. This is the play I was talking about, Bob. And that time they dragged down LaBarbera. You recall earlier in the game, I said that they had some trouble running that sweep with the DiBartolomeo because of the speed factor. They put in LaBarbera, and still Niagara Weefield was able to stop the play. That was Rich Donner with an excellent tackle. He dragged him down from behind. And um, I know that Niagara Weefield's worked on trying to contain Luport's wide running game. That, uh, of course, they had a lot of success last week against Niagara Falls with that. Uh, if they did get any success on the ground, it was going wide against Niagara Falls. It's third down. We have four minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Niagara Weefield leads by a score of 7-0. Seven no seven There's a running play with Stanton. He comes close to a first down, but he's going to be short as he does not get the ball to the 25-yard line. They have to get to the 26, and it's going to be fourth down. Niagara Weefield has shown uh, excellent defense against the run uh, throughout the season, and uh, that's probably their strength on defense. If they do have any weakness, and if you want to call it a weakness, teams have moved the ball at times in the air on them, and I think that's what Luport uh, is going to have to do to loosen them up a little bit because they're really playing up tight for that, that run. Johnston will be the kicker. Bob mentioned about the passing game, especially last week with LaSalle had some success against Niagara Wheatfield. Uh, Gagne. Gagne is stopped in his tracks at the 47-yard line, and we're going to take a commercial break. They mark it at the 48-yard line where Niagara Weefield will have the ball on offense. Krull comes in motion. Segura gives to Kaminska. Kaminska keeps running, keeps running. Shows great balance. Gets a first down and more. Gets the ball out inside the 33-yard line. Maybe close to the 34. Let's see where they mark it. Well, I guess they say his knee touched uh, before he got inside the 35-yard line. It'll be a first down. Fine run by Kaminska, who's run for 100 yards in four consecutive games. He's not a very big kid either, Bob. He only weighs 155 pounds and uh, runs with uh, unusual power for, for someone his size. Very good balance, very good balance. Kaminska comes split out here to the right. Again, Crawl goes in motion. They go inside to Gagne. There's a flag down. Gagne gets to the line of scrimmage and that's all. And they're anticipating a motion penalty against Niagara Weefield. It's a procedure penalty against Niagara Weefield. Well, the last one, uh, we looked, we thought for a moment that 15-yard penalty was going to hurt. They got him back to the 24-yard line, and then on the next play, Segura connected with Vinson on a 76-yard pass and run play for a touchdown. It's declined. Well, I don't understand that. It's going to, they're going to keep the down at second down, but they're declining the penalty. So we'll see what happens. Segura is the quarterback. Cinchetti is the blocking back up front that you're looking at. And behind him is Kaminska. They go to Kaminska. Cinchetti, Cinchetti throws the block, but this time Luport's defense is right there. That was a nice tackle by Todd Freshlog for, not, for uh, Lewiston Porter. And uh, Luport's defense, except for that one long pass, has shown uh, a very... Very tenacious uh, tackling ability in there against the Falcons. They're really not able to move the ball that well. Kaminska's had one or two 10-yard uh, runs, but other than that, the uh, Luport defense has been extremely tough. First flag had an interception. That's the heart of the Luport uh, football team is their defense, a 4-4 coached by Luke Carreri. Very effective throughout the years. Now again, Krull goes in motion. This time, Segura looks like he's going to throw. He throws, and it's incomplete, intended for Gagne, 34. Uh, 244 remain in the first quarter. 7-0 is the score in the football game. Niagara Wheatfield has the football in the lead. Now here comes a almost a new team in Bob. Is this, well, this is a kicking team, I assume. I was thinking of a field goal, but that'd be quite a distance. Vincent will kick from the 50-yard line. 
right at the 50, Vincent stands. Gets a good pass from center and drills it up the middle. They'll let this ball go and, in the end zone. And uh, going to let it go into the end zone, and now Wheatfield's kick from the 50 will go into the end zone. Luport will take the ball at their own 20. We're going to come right back after this message. All right, Newport has the football. Gagne looked like he got shaken up on that play. Johnston, look at him go, right through tacklers. He's gotta be tackled by Silvaglia who makes a key tackle. Nice play by John Silvaglia after Johnston made a brilliant run. He really showed some power on that play. He shook off three or four tacklers before Silvaglia finally dragged him down at the uh, 45 yard line. Silvaglia so made a touchdown saving tackle there and he ought to make tackles his father was a great football player at Niagara Falls High School that was a great run by Johnston who has a lot of power and runs with great balance and they go right back to Johnston and he goes to the 50 yard line now maybe get the ball into Niagara Wheatfield territory and I'll tell you that Lewiston Porter offensive line has come alive Bob it's going to be interesting to see how well Lewis and Porter can come back from being behind. We talked about that before the game with both coaches, and that was a concern that they did not want to fall behind. Under these conditions, it's tough to throw the ball. And uh, if Luport can march down the field and score here, it's going to be a huge lift for them in this ball game. Walker is the quarterback. Tyler, 22, has come into the football game. He, he went in motion too early. This is going to be a penalty against Luport as 22 got to jump before the ball was centered. And uh, we're going to have a motion penalty. That was a handoff to Stanton in there. He hurdled a couple of fellows right at the line, but that's all going to be. There you wiped see the out. single given by the official. I'm sorry, Bob. I, you see how much uh, after the tackling, Bob, there's a lot of shoving going on yes. down there. This is an intense rivalry, and uh, I'm sure it'll be reflected throughout the game, uh, especially on, in the pileups. I meant to uh, mention that fact earlier in the game. Sonoyan had some words with uh, one of the Niagara Wheatfield players. I think it was on the very first play of the game. The ball's at the 45-yard line. We got a minute and 40 seconds remaining after the motion penalty. DiBartolomeo goes out of the game, and it looks like LaBarbera will be in the game. With LaBarbera in the game, they like to run the sweep to the right. Walker calls the plays. He fumbles the football. They kick it. Look at this. Niagara Weefield should pick it up, and they do, and they got a break. Gagne, who was not hurt at all, recovered the fumble. There was a mix-up in the Luport backfield. Uh, Walker hit, had the ball hit the hip of one of his running backs. And Niagara Weefield has the ball at the 30-yard line with a gorgeous break. You know, we talked about penalties being the uh, fault of Niagara Wheatfield. It's hurt them throughout the year. Turnovers have hurt Lewis and Porter. That game against Canisius, they fumbled five or six times and threw five or six interceptions. So they've had problems turning the ball over, and this is this is going to hurt them here. Uh, that was a nice drive they had going. Yeah, they had a terrible game against Canisius. Came back to play a fine game against Niagara Falls High School, and Coach Lawler said the turnovers really killed them against Canisius. Now, Segura recovers his own fumble. Very quickly, Segura jumped on that fumble. I don't know, Bob, that ball might be very wet. Yeah, They're not wiping it off after every play, but it may be very wet. Well, it's so cold out there that your hands be, be, uh, you know, become numb, and it's tough to hold on to the ball. So if you think it's bad now, wait till the second half after these kids have been out there for three quarters. We're going to get a couple plays maybe left in this first quarter. Niagara Wheatfield has the football. We have less than 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Niagara Wheatfield has a 7-0 lead on a 76-yard touchdown pass to Vincent from Segura. Now the pitch to Kaminska, which wasn't a very effective pitch, and he's tackled for a loss. That ball almost got away from Kaminska. It looked like a shortstop throwing the ball to the second baseman, and it wasn't really a good relay or a good toss at all. Jeff Foringer in on the tackle for Lewis and Porter. And Bob, except for that one long pass uh, from Segura to Vincent, Niagara Wheatfield uh, has been having a lot of trouble moving the ball and uh, have, been not, have not been that effective on the ground, which has been their strength. Now that's the end of the first quarter. The score remains Niagara Wheatfield's Falcons 7, the Lewiston Porter Lancers nothing. We've talked about the rivalry between these two schools, Bob. 
Uh, this game today is being sponsored by Judge Hasley, who attended Niagara Wheatfield, and he's running for town justice out in Lewiston, and uh, also by Assemblyman Joe Pilater, whose right-hand man, Tom LaFornia, played for Lewiston Quarter and caught a uh, long touchdown bomb right on this very same field, 1971. The reason why I know that is because I was playing for Niagara Wheatfield, and they defeated us in that game 14-12 after we had taken a 12-0 halftime lead. So uh, not only is there a rivalry between the teams uh, when they're playing, you run into individuals uh, throughout your career, and uh, games with this magnitude really stick with you as you, as you get older. All right, we're going to start the second quarter with Niagara Wheatfield in possession at the 34-yard line. The quarterback is Segura, the running backs are Cinchetti and Kaminska. Now they send Krull in motion, and Segura's going to throw. If he can, and he throws, he's got a man, and Krull's got the football. What a... No, they said he's yeah, out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds, I guess. Well, he may have he may have stepped out of bounds and then come back in bounds. I don't know. He looked like he caught the ball in bounds. It's tough to see from our vantage point, but whatever, it's not going to count. It's going to come back. It looked like Segarra just threw that ball up for grabs, but he had a receiver out there and he almost pulled that play out. Now Vincent will kick from the 50 yard line. This is the exact same spot he kicked earlier in the game. Of course, they were going the other way. He kicked the ball into the end zone on a previous try. Vincent could kick the football, I'll tell you. Tomei is going to let it go. And it's, oh, what a play. No, it's going to be a touchback. Gagne almost made a great play. But it's going to be a touchback. They're not going to allow that. And the ball's going to come out to the 20-yard line. You're not allowed to bat the ball. And uh, that's why the people in the stands, <laughs> though they're booing now, they don't understand that in high school you're not allowed to bat the football. In fact, Lewiston, uh, Niagara Wheatfield got a penalty earlier in the year against Grand Island, I believe, uh, trying to down the, the ball. The, the gentleman actually spiked it as if he was playing volleyball, and they got a penalty for that. Uh, they're not saying Lou. They're booing. <laughs> yeah, Lou, no Lou Pinella out here today. Lou Pacone's out clearing the woods to build houses during the strike. He's not here today. Well, if you spike the ball in uh, high school football, that's a penalty. If you go into the end zone and spike the ball, that's a delay of the game penalty. And yeah, It might be a good rule. I don't know. It's... Yeah, it cuts down, a lot on, of question, you know. cuts down on the hot dogging in high school, uh -huh. which I guess Which could lead role. to problems later on in the game, yeah. Right. That looks like uh, Porzik at quarterback. It is Porzik, and he fumbles the ball. Now, he didn't actually fumble the ball. The running back did, but Porzik has replaced Walker. Uh, DeBartolomeo recovered the football. Porzik is the quarterback. It is second down. And they are... They lost a yard on the play, Bob. Porzik is the backup quarterback to Walker. Johnston remains as the running back along with DeBartolomeo and Stanton. Porzik gives to DeBartolomeo and he is not going anywhere. He is stacked up at the line of scrimmage and this running game, outside of that brilliant run by Johnston, has not really generated any offense. Now it's been tough for both offensive squads, uh, Bob, and I'm sure the weather has a lot to do with that. In fact, uh, under these conditions, the defense will always have the advantage. <laughs> of course, as we talk about that, the only score of the game was on a 76-yard bomb that you would think uh, would not be able to get off in this situation. Right, right from this point, Bob, almost from this uh, same position on the field, Porzek is a senior quarterback. He's going to roll out and maybe throw here. He throws downfield. He's got, oh, it's picked off by Savaglia. is having a heck of a game. Savaglia does some great running with the football. That's amazing. I remember this young man, Bob, when he must have weighed 110 pounds. He has really come a long way. He's had a great game. He's made a key tackle, and now he's intercepted a pass. Yeah, Walker put the ball up there, and uh, Niagara Wheatfield had good coverage on their defense. As the sun comes out and shines brightly on Terry Harvey Field, the score is 7-0 to zero in favor of Niagara Weefield, 10-20 to go here in the first half. And uh, Lewiston Porter is going to have to keep him out here. So Baglia picks off the pass. Niagara Weefield's got another break. They've got great field position. The quarterback is Segura. Kaminska is the top running back. And Krull goes in motion. And they go to Kaminska. Look at this play by Frischlag, 53. He was in the backfield before Kaminska got the football. Yeah, you can tell they're keying on uh, Kaminska because they, they, he was on, on Kaminska before Kaminska even got the football practically and uh, the loose supporter defense have been out there a long time this first half and uh, they're doing a fine job of keeping Niagara Weefield out. If they can keep him out here, this will be a big lift. 
That'll hurt your average, your 100-yard running average. <laughs> yeah, it sure will. When you get defensive plays like that, very, very mobile and agile linebackers on the part of Luport. They're very quick, and they've been noted for that part of the game. Second down, see if they run away from that pursuit now. They go to the opposite side. Segura's trying to throw. He dances around, and he's going to be tackled. And he'll lose a couple more yards, maybe five to... Sonoyan is a good football player, number 72. He's a strong individual out there, and it's going to be tough to keep him out. Niagara Refuel's going backwards after the interception by Savaglia, 29. Two plays have lost about 13 yards. You know, looking at this Lewis and Porter defense, I know they had a lot of turnovers against Canisius, but it's hard to believe that anybody scored 28 points against them. Yeah, it looks like they might have given you the ball right at the five-yard line because they're tough. They're tough. They've been burned on that long touchdown pass, but they've been solid the rest of the game. Segura, the quarterback, looks over the defense, and he's going to throw again if he can. Look at this play. He's tackled. He throws. And that wasn't a very wise pass on the part of Segura. We got a penalty flag down. I tell you, that, that may have shown Segura's inexperience, Bob, because you, sometimes you throw the ball like that. And, of course, in professional football, that play would have been ruled dead right at that point. I think you talked about that with Rich Luciani last week when you were discussing the hearsay and the hints. Yes. I wonder what the call is here. Uh, he might have been throwing it to an ineligible receiver. Possibly. That's yeah. what happened. Possibly, yeah. There was no one in that particular area. You know, when you talk to Rich Luciani, do you ever mention uh, that he was an outstanding football player? I know you talk about yourself, but you don't talk about uh, <laughs> Rich. That's going to be a penalty against, uh, I believe that's a loss of down, too. Well, Niagara Weefield's offense is going backwards on this drive. And it is a loss. Of, no, let's see. It's fourth down. Yeah, it's a loss of down. There's a single when he puts his hand on his cap behind his head. It's a loss of down penalty. Now, Niagara Weefield wants a timeout. Vincent called the timeout. They want to get this kicking game together. We're going to take a commercial break. Okay, Vincent called a timeout to get the kicking game straightened out. And the ball is at the 50-yard line, and Vincent will be kicking from his, in his own territory. And uh, the weather has seemed to lighten up as far as the rain is concerned, but it's getting colder. And we've seen the effect of the cold weather on the players. We've seen a lot of fumbles and a couple interceptions in this football game. We have 8 minutes and 32 seconds remaining. In the first half, Niagara Wheatfield leads by a score of 7 0 on a 76 yard touchdown pass from Segura. Well, I thought he said lost it down, Bob. I thought he, I'm pretty sure he said lost it down, but I don't know. Now they're running like it's third down. We'll see. Segura calls the plays out of the shotgun. They've got now the he's going to run the football. He's got some room. He dances through a couple tacklers, makes a great run, and gets the ball upfield. Fine run by Segura, and I could have sworn that was fourth down. The line marker had it at fourth down. The scoreboard had it at fourth down. The official mentioned a loss of down, but now we're going to have fourth down. So we must have missed a down somewhere. Well, let's see. It looks like, yeah, it looks like they're not going to punt. It looks like they're going to uh, go for it here. You know, looking over the crowd, Bob, the weather's really poor weather conditions, but we've got a nice crowd out here. I'm sure it's not as big as it would have been had we had an, a warmer day, but a uh, good turnout today at Terry Harvey Field. Well, maybe we're going to have five downs like they did in a Dartmouth game <laughs> way back in football history. I don't know. I thought it was, but it's still fourth down now. That's what counts. It looks like a blitz coming from uh, Luport as Segura throws, and he had a man, but the pass was delivered a little low. That was intended for Trichler. Uh, it might have been our angle, but it didn't look like he reacted to the ball. No, that's right. I thought he stopped for some reason. And now Vincent will kick on fourth down. We'd like to thank our sponsors today, Judge Hasley from Lewiston and Assemblyman Joe Pilater, who will be uh, sponsoring our second half. Uh, it's always nice to do these games, and it's a, a lot nicer when we have fine folks out there who'd like to be a part of it and help us out with the financial costs. 
Yeah, they got me confused. Vincent can't kick. Luport's got the football. Stanton runs the football. Stanton runs the football. I got some great news back there, Robert. It doesn't make much difference, but the cards are winning in the World Series. And you know you know what I think of the cards. Yes, you've, you've uh, filed the cards ever since you were a little boy, right? 1946 was the first year when uh, Enos Slaughter scored all the way from first base. We got an injured player. As Stanton, I believe. Bob, I got a trivia question for you. The trivia question of the week. The, we, we know Rich Vitson is a great field goal kicker. He's had three field goals within the range of 30 to 35 yards, I believe. The high school record, the national collegiate high school record, or high school record for field goals, distance, is held by a major league manager. A manager in the major leagues who is currently managing now and he has the high school he has distance the high record? school distance record hmm i'll let you think about that for a while and the okay. viewers i read that uh, incidentally i read that this week in sport magazine very very interested to find out who that individual was well if anybody at home gets sports magazine maybe they can get the last copy out and check through that the quarterback is walker he pitches back to a very speedy greg labarbera and labarbera is hemmed in I think he stopped just short of the first down there. You know, I shouldn't really predict too much about that World Series because Milwaukee plays so well coming from behind. They've been behind right. all year long. And the fact that these games run uh, after the fact yeah. uh, we've really doesn't have much consequence, trouble. right, for yeah. somebody who's watching this on Monday night. Or, uh, the series could possibly be over or maybe even uh, tonight when the game will be shown Saturday at 6 o'clock. Probably saying, what are they, what's that guy talking about? There's a dive straight ahead by the quarterback who attempts to get the first down, Walker. Yeah, I think he's got it. Of course, you're always at the mercy of the officials on the placement in this situation. Well, let me tell you Johnny Madden's theory. We use it every week. When the pile goes backwards, it's a first down. When the pile, or pile goes forwards, it's a first down. When the pile right. goes backwards, the official will mark the ball the opposite. And it, and it works. If you watch yeah. that, as you notice football games throughout the year, you will notice that he has a very accurate um, observation about that particular well, call. Well, they, they got it there. They got the first down in that situation. 6-0-3 remain in the first half. Luport with the football trails by seven points. Porzak is the quarterback, gives to LaBarber, shakes one tackle, gets outside by and rolling. Rolling grabs him and tackles him just shy of the 50-yard line. Prohaska, number three, shot through there and almost pulled him down the backfield, but uh, he managed to turn the corner before he was tackled. Okay, Robert, you remember now that the gentleman who manages has the record for a field goal. He's a manager in the major league. He has a record for the field goal. And what goal. sport is he a manager? In baseball. In baseball. He, the guy read this. Somebody over here read the uh, article because he said Harvey Keene. Harvey Keene is the answer. That was Joe Kwiatkowski. Well, he should know because he's a Johnston. baseball man. Johnston runs straight ahead. I believe that Harvey Keene, who's had a very tragic uh, life the last few years, not in baseball, but outside of baseball with that operation which lost him his leg, holds the record 52 yards in the city of Milwaukee and playing high school football for Lutheran High School there. He kicked a 52-yard field goal, and that is the high school record. So Rich Vincent's got something to shoot for. Is Vincent a sophomore? I think he's, a, he's only in 10th grade, is that right? Yes. He kicks the ball very well. Newport has the football. There's a motion. You can see one of the interior linemen move there. And that's going to be a penalty, a five-yard procedure penalty against Lewiston Porter. Bob, as you mentioned, Lewiston Porter's defense has been tough. They have really bottled up the uh, vaunted running game of uh, Larry Kaminska. And uh, they've been able to move the ball. They've been alternating their quarterbacks. See, Walker's coming back in now. Porzik and Wa uh, Walker have alternated. And Walker uh, customarily plays the game, and Porzik backs him up. Now, Walker is the quarterback now. Johnston's been the most effective running back. Here's a pass play. Good blocking this time, and a good throw by Walker. And look out. I, he looked like he was tripped. Yeah, it's intercepted, but Johnston was tripped. That's going to be pass interference. That pass is going to be wiped out. That interception will be wiped out. What do you think, Bob? Well, 
there was contact. I don't know if I agree with the call of, uh, you know, pass interference, both gentlemen. That brings up a, a rule, Bob, that, it, that it, you just you can't get the correct interpretation. They, they claim both gentlemen have the, the right to go to the football, but uh, it seems that every time contact's made, whether the defender's going for the football or not, they'll call interference. That's not just in high school. That's in professional ranks as well. Well, this is a 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Of course, it's not where the penalty was... Uh, or took place. Well, it's that'll be a big first down for him. Oh, yeah, and of course it wipes out an interception. And would have given the uh, Mo, our old pal momentum would have gone back to Niagara Wheatfield. But now the ball is placed at the 40-yard line. And Newport has the football. I think this is their deepest penetration of the game. With 421 remaining in the first half, Newport trails by a score of seven nothing. Uh, Walker is being chased, and he's going to be dragged down by Rowling. Rowling was in there like a shot. And you see Walker tuck that ball away as he started to go down. I know they've worked on that, uh, trying to prevent the turnovers. You know, except for that long touchdown pass, this is not what you would call the most exciting game we've seen this year. But I think that reflects the rivalry of these two teams. They're not going to give you much. Well, it's been a defensive game, and that's why maybe the excitement is lacking. Uh, that time, somebody evidently missed a blocking assignment, and uh, Rowling was right in on Walker. Looking out our window here, I see coaches from uh, many area schools, several of which I'm sure are scouting uh, both teams, and uh, I'm sure there's a few coaches that just came out to watch this game today. Well, it's the key game of the day. This is LaBarber. He slipped. He was tackled but by Cincetti, but he slipped anyway. And Bob, as you mentioned, I think Niagara Wheatfield uh, uh, in the rest of their schedule, if I understand this correctly, uh, Budeman or Bowdeman is the correct pronunciation, the quarterback from Lockport was hurt, he's out for the year. And so is Morano, the quarterback from Niagara Falls High School, and, they, and Niagara Wheatfield plays those two teams. So injuries may be a factor as this uh, football season continues. Right, if Niagara Wheatfield won here, it would seem that that would uh, uh, certainly be an advantage to them playing those teams while both their starting quarterbacks and both quarterbacks outstanding throwers. Which as you know, if you're gonna have an upset in high school football. Fumble! Walker gets the ball, look at this play! And Johnson's got a man and he throws oh. throws him, wow. Well, I'm, that, sure they, I'm sure they didn't plan the fumble, but they had Niagara Weefield faked out on that uh, option pass. Well, that would have been a play they'd have to write up for their playbook. <laughs> that play, uh, sometimes the best laid plans of mice and men go astray and that time they almost got a touchdown out of it I mean the receiver number 80 Jimmy Hull was wide open of course who threw that who threw that ball Johnson, Johnson? had a rush because <laughs> he looked up and he saw a man open he just threw it he threw that ball a long way now Johnson's gonna kick it from his own territory from maybe the 37 yard line oh it looked like it was partially deflected Looks and like it, Steve and it's going to be, no, nah, they shouldn't down it. Luport's going to let the ball roll. And very wisely, they let it go down to the 22-yard line where Niagara Wheatfield will have the football. They have a 7 nothing lead. They scored on a 76-yard pass play from Segura to Vincent. And this half has gone by uh, rather quickly. Uh, of course, the running game has been 90% uh, of what we've seen thus far. Uh, last week, when we did the LaSalle, Niagara Weefield game, the first half went extremely long because, of course, LaSalle is uh, a passing team, and Niagara Weefield threw the ball quite a bit in that first half, and that, that meant for a long game, but this game has gone by very quickly. Well, we're doing this game. LaSalle is having their homecoming against Lockport. There's a running play that's going to net a couple yards, maybe gets the ball to the 20. Three yard line. That was Larry Kaminska. Yard. I'm sure Kaminska doesn't have too many yards in this first half. And uh, that has been why Luport's defense has been so successful. When you stop Larry Kaminska, you stop the Niagara Weefield running game. Though they do have some other runners, but no one has had the success that Larry Kaminska has. Well, Reed and Sonoyan and Freshlag have played a fine game. They've been right on Kaminska. As you said before, they're really keen on him as a running back. Cinchetti does not carry the ball that often. He's the blocking back, the up back. Once again, you see Cinchetti come out here, throw the block, and Kaminska do the running. Kaminska get the ball to the 27-yard line. Third down. That was a nice tackle in there by uh, Pete Sikowski. And uh, Niagara Weefield has not had uh, a chance to move the ball. I see we got a timeout here, Bob. So with this timeout, why don't we take a commercial message?
Bob, we've got a lot of celebrities up in our press box today. Uh, I'd like to think it's because many. they like to see us, but I think it's because of the weather conditions that we've we've uh, packed the press box. I think that's what packed them in here. Uh, that was a very wise decision on the part of Harry Lawler to call a timeout. You see Niagara Wheatfield huddling. There are a minute and 30 seconds remaining, 30 seconds remaining. And of course, Niagara Wheatfield has the football, but Newport would like to get it back one more time as Coach Cacciatore leaves the field. Uh, this is a big play because uh, I think Newport may call a timeout right after this play if Niagara Wheatfield does not get a first down. Let's see what happens. Seguera, there's the blitz, and they got the running back right at the line of scrimmage, and there's the timeout, and there's the five seconds that have elapsed. So Newport will get the football back. They will force Vincent to kick from deep in his own territory. We talked about the key to this game, the ability of uh, Lewison's defense to contain the Niagara Weefield offense. We talked about that before the game started, and I think that has really been a factor. Um, though I think the second half, Lewis and Porter is going to have to show uh, an ability themselves to put some points on the board if they're going to pull this one out. But what they're doing, Bob, on these uh, big third down plays, they're rushing or blitzing their linebackers and they're, and they're missing their blocking assignments. And you know, I talked to Coach Cacciatore earlier in the year, maybe before the first game, and one of the problems he thought with his team might lie with his offensive line. Although this offensive line has done a pretty good job, it was young and it was a, he thought it might be a problem. It's come along, uh, but they've been battled by a very good Luport defense. Now Vincent's under some pressure here from inside his 10. He kicks and Tomei is gonna let the ball be downed at the 46 yard line where Luport will have a shot at it with a minute and 15 seconds. They trail by a score of seven nothing. We'd like to thank our sponsors once again for this game. Uh, reminder, uh, next week we'll be at this very same Terry Harvey Field as the Niagara Wheatfield Falcons will be entertaining the Niagara Falls Power Cats. Hey, who could forget that game last year between Niagara Wheatfield and Niagara Falls High School on that great field goal kick by Anton in the last seconds, one of the fine games we did on cable television along with a Lockport Niagara Wheatfield game, two classics. Out of the shotgun, Walker throws over the middle. And we got a gain on that play that very close, maybe a first down. Uh, Lawler wants to move that offense. Tyler caught the football. 46 seconds remain. They're in Niagara Wheatfield territory and they're out of the shotgun again. And Walker looks over the field and throws to Tyler. Nice catch by Tyler at the 40 yard line. Well, that was good for a first down. Tackle made there by Laverne Rowling. And they're just throwing underneath the linebackers right now, taking what they're, uh, what they're getting. And the, the funny thing is that, you know, that's good enough to move all the way down the field. And you wonder why teams often give that up, Bob. When well, you, you play preventive defense, you're, you're preventing against a long touchdown. But uh, nine out of ten times, you see the team march right down the field, taking exactly what you're giving them. Of course, uh, Luport has called their final time out of this half. There's Harry Lawler on the field talking to his team. I think Bob uh, is characteristic of a defense, though, to give the ball up the middle, figuring that if the receiver catches the ball, he still can be tackled and consume a lot of time on the clock. Uh, very often, that's the play that's open, and when a quarterback goes back, he be the secondary receiver is the man over the middle, so he does throw to him. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's by design as much as it is out of uh, expediency to throw the ball to the man who's open. You see Harry Lawler in the huddle with his uh, offense. This, of course, uh, Harry Lawler's first year as a head football coach at Lewiston Porter. He's, he has coached with the staff for several years, and uh, this is his first big game as a yep. coach. I think he mentioned on your show that he uh, that uh, Tonawanda was a big game for him because of, he is from Tonawanda. Right, he's more right? familiar with the North Tonawanda Tonawanda rivalry. And now you're going to see Walker throw out of the shotgun again. And let's see what he can do here. He runs out here away from the pursuit. He throws way downfield. A man is open, and that's a touchdown. Oh, he dropped it. No, it's a touchdown. They're going to call it a touchdown. Johnston is going to get a touchdown. Unbelievable. And that play, they had they turned the defensive man around on that and uh, left the, the offensive man open, and that was a long pass. Walker really put that ball a long way up there, and though he did drop the ball in the end zone, all he got to do was break that plane. 24 seconds to go in the first half. Walker on a very unassuming type play, rolled out to his left, and all of a sudden, Johnston was in the end zone behind a defender, and he, he, he dropped the ball, but they said he had possession. It's a touchdown. 
And now Quirk, number 50, will tie, try to tie the game out of Tomei's hole. This is a big point. 21 Tomei holes, Quirk 50 will attempt. There is the penalty flag is down. And if this is against Wheatfield, and it looks like it, it may be, this may change Harry Lawler's thinking. They may go for two here, Bob. I'll tell you the truth. Well, I understand they have a very good kicker, so. Yeah, Quirk can kick the football, number 50. He's still lined up. He's got the tee on the field. How about that? that we've had two unusual plays. Vincent scored 76 yards. And Johnston scored on a play that looked like it would never develop for a touchdown. Now the kick by Quirk. Tomei Holes. Good pass from center. And the kick. 7-7 seven, seven tie with 24 seconds remaining in the first half. And lightning is struck here at Terry Harvey Field. You know, the key to that pass play that went for a touchdown is the fact that uh, Walker looked like he was going to run the football. He had to scramble out of the pocket, and I think that's what uh, fooled the defender on that play. He started to come up, and the man got behind him. Well, one of the things you never want to do, though, is to come up, because if Walker could run all day, he had to go 40-some yards for a touchdown. And once the defender came up, Johnston stuck, snuck in behind him, caught the pass, and dropped it, but he had possession for the touchdown. I didn't know where Johnston had caught the ball. I thought maybe he had caught it outside of the end zone and then dropped it. But he had caught the ball in the end zone, so it is a touchdown, and the score is 7-7 seven, seven as Quirk comes through with a big extra point. Well, it looks like we're gonna end this half exactly where we started out, in right? the deadlock. And it's been a pretty even first half. Turnovers have been a big factor, and, and weird plays have been a big factor. Plays that you really didn't think were gonna score touchdowns have accounted for the points as Gagne watches the ball go out of bounds. And the ball should come to the 40-yard line where Niagara Weefield will start their offense. They got a break there, that ball rolling out of bounds just before it reached the end zone. Had it gone out of the end zone, of course, it would have been on the 20. Yep. Segura will probably throw here, I guess. I, you know, we <laughs> predicted earlier in the game that he wouldn't throw. He threw 76 yards for a touchdown. Yeah, it's hard to predict, but I think they're going to run the football here because you, you give up an interception right here, and Lupor okay. can still, from what I understand from Coach Lawler, uh, they, they do have uh, potential to kick field goals. They just haven't been in that situation. Uh, but if they had gotten the football back in any area down here inside the 40, I'm sure with time running out, they would just take a shot and try and kick the go-ahead field goal. Well, let's see. We have 24 seconds. The score is tied at 7-7. Seven, seven. Let's see if Seguero will run the football. If he does, it'll probably be Kaminska. It is. He fumbles. And Chinchetti recovers at the line of scrimmage, a 40-yard line. <laughs> we talked about not throwing the ball and turning it over, and they almost fumbled the ball away. Well, the weather conditions, the cold hands might be a factor. We have not been on the field, so we don't know. But when we walked in, it was extremely cold. And the wind is a very big factor out here at Terry Harvey Field. We're running out of time. That may be the last play. It is the last play of the first half. The score remains Lewis and Porter's Lancers 7, Niagara Wheatfield 7. As you see, the teams leave the field. Coach Cacciatore a little disconsolate now. He had a 7-0 lead and looked like he had the first half locked up as he talks to John Lachance. And we're going to come back with the second half in just a moment. Are you? Yeah, look, you got them. Right. I don't hear anything on my. Okay. You ready? Okay, we're rolling the tape. Total yardage: 114 yards for Niagara Wheatfield, 113 for Lukeport, and the score is. Welcome back to exciting high school football action. This afternoon, we're at Terry Harvey Field for the Lukeport Lancers versus the Niagara Wheatfield Falcons. Okay, this is Bob Kaczynski with you up in the booth right now. And before we start our second half in the 7-7 ball game, we're going to talk to Randy Hasley, who is running for the town justice out there in Lewiston and a sponsor of the first half of our game. Randy, you're a graduate of niagara Wheatfield, correct? Yes, I am, 1973. And uh, it's got to be a very big game for you out here. Uh, we sure appreciate is. the sponsorship. What do you think of this first half? Uh, it's been very exciting, 7-7. You can't get much closer, and uh, it's great to see the sun out. I got up this morning, was 
Kind of lousy outside, but the sun's out, and we got a beautiful game on our hands, and we're looking forward to an exciting second half. Well, we really appreciate your sponsorship uh, on this game, and being a, uh, an alumni of Niagara Wheatfield and working out there in Lewiston, uh, you have to be a little bit torn as to who you <laughs> like in this game. Boy, it, it sure is tough to root for either side. I like both teams, but back at my Niagara Wheatfield days, uh, we used to get up a little higher for Lewport than everybody else, so it's uh, quite a battle, and it's shown by the score right now. Okay, Randy, we want to thank you for coming up to talk to us, and we want to wish you a lot of success in November. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Now we're going to have Assemblyman Joe Pilater, who is going to be sponsoring our second half. And Joe has been a big sponsor of high school football, not only this year, but two years ago when he ran. And Joe, very quickly before this game starts, we want to thank you for coming up. And uh, how did you like the first half? I loved it. Anytime a politician can watch a game where both schools are in his district and the score is 7-7, seven to seven, it's great. You're right. You're right, Joe. You can't lose. Uh, of course, unfortunately, one of these two teams will have to lose this afternoon. And uh, it's going to be a big second half. Uh, we want to thank you for sponsoring this game, and also you'll be on our uh, our game next week and the game after that. So you've uh, put a lot of money towards high school football. Right, but I, you better show my daughters the game after <laughs> next week, otherwise I won't be able to live at home, you know. That's right, she's a pom-pom girl, Lewiston Porter, correct? Both of them are pom-pom girls. We'll get some shots of her in two weeks. Joe, thanks very much. We're going to turn it back over to Bob Laurie, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you throughout the second half. You'll be up rooting for both teams. You better believe I'll root for both teams. And good luck in November. Thank you. Okay, we're just about ready to start the second half, and we're going to turn it right over now to our play-by-play -play announcer, Mr. Bob Lorry. Thank you very much, Robert. I just got the statistics on the first half from Bill Ross. You believe this, talk about games, games being close. Niagara Wheatfield has 114 total yards. Lewiston Porter has 113. So they can't be much closer than that. Lou Porter has three first downs, and Niagara Wheatfield's two. Newport is three for six in the air for 57 yards. Niagara Wheatfield is one for six for 76 yards. That was a touchdown play to Vincent. Very, very close football game as indicated by the score, the amount of turnovers, and the exciting touchdown plays. Now you're looking at the Niagara Wheatfield team as they prepare to kick off to start the second half. And here is the kickoff. And LaBarbera fumbles and Tome gets it in the air. And he starts to come back upfield. Couple good blocks and Tome runs the ball over the 20 yard line. They actually picked up a couple yards on that saving grab there. Uh, if that ball had gone in the end zone, of course they would have got it on the 20 and uh, now they have the ball on the 23. So every yard counts, I guess. Is that, that is Basil or Basili. Is that the correct, what's the pronunciation of that, Bob? Well, I guess uh, people up here have been calling Basili and I think that's, I think that's the correct pronunciation. He's, he's done some fine kicking. He's kicked the last two times. Cinchetti started the game as the kicker, and then Basili came in and has boomed two kicks. The quarterback is Walker. The running backs are Johnston, who carries the football. Johnston gets maybe four yards to the 26, 27 yard line. That's a dive. They run it very effectively, get some great blocking up front. I don't know if uh, Lewis and Porter made any adjustments during that first half or at halftime, but it seemed to me in that second quarter they had more success with that dive play than they had initially in the first quarter. Second down, ball's at the 27-yard line. Lou Port's possession, 7-7 seven, seven tie, running play. And look at the runner carry a couple of tacklers. That was Stanton. That's a first down. And Lou Port's come out in the second half a little fired up on offense as they run the ball twice and after two downs have a first down. Lewis and Porter uh, to me looks very impressive today Bob. Of course neither team scoring a lot of points but uh, this is the best that I've seen them play. I've I had a chance to see them play against uh, LaSalle on television and also against Lewis and Porter and uh, I don't know what your feelings are but they look they look to be playing much more consistent to me today. Well, there's an unusual thing happened Bob. They have had to call a timeout and we're going to take, Luke, the supporter has had to call a timeout. We're going to take a break. Come right back. All right, Jimmy Walker's the quarterback. We'll comment about that timeout in just a moment. 
They have just run for a first down, and again, Johnston carries a couple tacklers, gets the ball over the 40-yard line. Lou Port is moving the ball on the ground. And they're having success going off the uh, right side of the Niagara Wheatfield defensive line. And uh, an interesting note, Grand Island probed that side of the Wheatfield defense all day. Uh, did not have a lot of success, but uh, seemed to go that way. And I think they're, they're trying to stay away from Laverne Rowling, number 73, who was a big linebacker on the other side of uh, the Wheatfield defense. Yeah, they've been running away from Rowling, number 73. They move the ball on three consecutive downs. They go inside this time to Johnston, and look at this. Another first down to the 49-yard line of Niagara Wheatfield, and Casada had to make a key tackle to stop Johnston. And this Newport running game is uh, picking up some momentum here, Bob. They're making some big holes for the running backs, and uh, they've got the physical size to pick up the yards. And the sun has come out. 9:59 remain in the third period. A 7-7 tie from Terry Harvey Field. Lou Port is moving the football. We're going to question that timeout and see if it comes back to haunt them. They had to take a very early timeout in this half. That's the first time Niagara Wheatfield's defense has really come up with a defensive stand. That time it was Johnston again. He got the ball to maybe the 47-yard line. And they still gave up three yards. You know, uh, an interesting note here for Niagara Wheatfield, this junior class for the Falcons, Bob, have yet to lose a football game in their career here at Niagara Wheatfield. They were undefeated as freshmen, they were undefeated as, uh, on the JV level, and of course they've won all four ball games uh, on the varsity level. So those fellows have yet to, to uh, taste defeat. Walker ran the option play very well that time. He looked like he made a pitch, and then he kept the ball. Costada again in on a tackle, number 89. It's third down. The ball's at the 44-yard line of Niagara Wheatfield. Walker has directed this attack since the opening kickoff to start this second half. Luport got the ball at the 24. They moved to the 44 of Niagara Wheatfield behind the running of Johnston and Stanton. DeBartum LeMay has been doing the blocking, number 42. This time it's Johnston, and this time they don't go anywhere. They were looking for Johnston, and they stopped him at the 43-yard line, and it'll be fourth down. So we may see Johnston in punt formation, unless Lawler, Harry Lawler, chooses to gamble. And, of course, they have a fake punt play, which they used against Niagara Falls last week. In fact, it worked for a first down. Well, they're not even going to fake it. They're going to come right out and run out of it, the regular set. They're going to go three yards from this formation if they can. It's fourth down. They're going to throw. The man is open. Tomei catches the ball. Yeah, he's and he's got, got, got a first down. First down. Tomei was covered that time by Sabaglia. He beats Sabaglia inside. And after Sabaglia had made two key plays earlier in the game, he was turned around on the touchdown play and now beaten for a first down on that pass from Walker to Tomei. Tomei's catch really made that play. He had to make a tough over the shoulder catch and uh, they picked up just enough to get that first down and Lewiston Porter has an impressive drive going here in this third quarter. 36 yard line in Niagara Wheatfield, the football in the possession of the Lancers, 7-7 tie, third quarter from Terry Harvey Field. You saw Walker juggle the ball. He pitches back to LaBarbera and LaBarbera is gonna be tackled at the line of scrimmage. And now a very late flag, a very late flag. And this may be a penalty against Niagara Wheatfield because Luport is ecstatic. I mean, they are jumping for joy. It's a personal foul against Niagara Wheatfield and a very crucial penalty. Came after the play had ended. Now you see where that flag came from, Bob. Came from uh, the bottom of our picture, the, uh, the official on the outside. So he saw something from the back that apparently the officials in the front had not noticed. And that a penalty like that can kill you. That's a personal foul. Moves the ball to the 21-yard line. First down for Luport. You saw the Lewiston Porter players jump in the air. You knew something good had happened as far as they were concerned. And a foul was called against Niagara Wheatfield after the play had ended. Walker inside to DeBartolomeo, look out! Oh, what a tackle by Savaglia. 
Savaglia saved a touchdown there as Deep Bartolomeo started to ramble. He got the ball to the 10 yard line, another first down. This has been the most uh, impressive offensive drive I've seen this year against uh, this Niagara Wheatfield defense. Lewis and Forder took this ball at their own 23 yard line, have marched all the way down to the Niagara Wheatfield 10 yard line and just chewing up the clock and, and keeping it on the ground except for that fourth down play. 631 remain in the third period. 7 7 tie, and Luke Port is threatening with the football. The handoff is fumbled, and we feel as recovered. Well, that's that's what has plagued Lewis and Porter all year. They've had those turnovers, and when you turn the ball over on the uh, opponent's 10-yard line, it's you know, it, of course, it's not going to help you. But you have to start wondering what do you have to do to put the ball in the end zone. Now, Harry Lawler's got to be sick after that drive. That was a brilliant drive, executed by Lou Port, guided by Jimmy Walker. Again, they missed connections at the 10-yard line. Niagara Wheatfield has gotten a gorgeous break with 6-12 remaining in the third period. Now they got to work their way out of very poor field position, but they do have the football. Segura is the quarterback. Cinchetti the blocking back, Kuzminska the running back. He runs, he almost got tackled by the face mask. He got out to the 16 yard line. Yeah, it looked like there's a face mask in there and uh, nobody made the uh, made the call on that, but I thought I saw somebody reach across and pull his face mask through the... It appeared that way, Bob, yeah. Good run by Kaminska, maybe his longest run of the game. Kaminska definitely does not have 100 yards in his range at this point in time. I think uh, they gave the statistics earlier and uh, I think they had 38 yards on the ground. I'm surprised you half. had that many. Segura to Kaminska, look at the hole here. And LaBarbera has to make the tackle. What a hole. Good job by the offensive line that time. Kaminska went right through the middle. What a strange turn of events, right, Robert? Luport goes down the field without any problem, and now Niagara Weefield gets the ball, and they're running the ball. I don't know what the coaches said at halftime, but they must have a magic formula as far as running is concerned, because both teams are running the ball very effectively. Well, they've got both. The first half was all defense. The second half has been all offense. Let's see what they call here with Segura giving to Kaminska for the third consecutive time. Well, that and was a, there's the face mask. That was a flagrant face yeah, mask. Yeah, Boise, number 91, decided to tackle Kaminska by the face mask, and you can't do that. Now, in that situation, uh, for the people watching at home, uh, I'm sure Voise did, did not intentionally try to grab the face mask, but when you, once you go in for the tackle and your hand gets caught in the, uh, the headgear, uh, you, you know, it's all over. Not to mention the injury factor uh, for a running back when you get your neck wrench like that. But now uh, a penalty is going to help Niagara Weefield. Yep, and the tide has just turned incredibly in this third quarter. Lewiston Porter dominated the first six minutes of the quarter. They looked like they were going to go all the way for a touchdown on the ground. They threw one pass for a first down. They got to the 10-yard line. They fumbled the ball. Niagara Weefield got the ball at their own 10, and they marched to, let's see where they spotted, the 44, 43-yard line. So they've come 33 yards in three plays. You know, we've been lucky enough to be in this press box uh, the entire game, but from what I understand from the people that have been outside, that, that wind factor has just been numbing the, the temperature out there. And uh, for these running backs, it's got to be tough holding on to the football. It's extremely cold, although the sun is out. And I think you can see that indicated on your screen. It's a lot brighter. Segura straight ahead. Look at this. Oh, the referee made a great tackle. The official made a great tackle. He's down. That's a great shot. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if uh, that's illegal pick block there, isn't it, Bob? I'll tell you, Dick Luciani standing behind him called him Herman Hickman. He made a great tackle on Segura. He, he really assisted the Luport defense that time. Fine call by Segura. They're in Luport territory. Niagara, we feel, is driving with the football. Cinchetti, the up back, Kaminska, the deep back, and look at this. Well, Sonoyan must feel kind of funny because he stepped over the line of scrimmage and he got his hand in the cookie jar there. Looks like it's first and five. This looks like an entirely different ball game than from what we saw the first half. Well, a moment ago, the people were moaning because the people in the booth who are for Niagara Weefield were moaning because they looked like Luport was going to dominate this third quarter, and they did. And now Niagara Weefield has come to life. And let's see. 
see if they can continue this drive. Turnovers have been a very important factor in this game. Kaminska behind Chinchetti, and he gets good yardage. Nice block by 75. Very close to the first down. Gets to the 32-yard line. Three minutes and 50 seconds remain as King made the tackle. And let's see, do we have a timeout? No, we got a measurement, all right. Eric Joe Kutowski's right on the ball. He knew he knew Harvey Keene. He knows when we have measurements. We're going to take a commercial while we have this measurement. Niagara Refield first down at the 32. Segura, the quarterback, gives fumbles. And let's see, Luport's got the football. Neither team wants the game as they continually fumble away drives. You know, it looks like the same offense out there for both teams. Drive the length of the field and then fumble the football. Foringer recovered the fumble at the 30-yard line. Two brilliant drives executed by two junior quarterbacks. Jimmy Segura and Jimmy Walker, and then fumbles have nullified the drives. Luport gets the advantage as far as the field position is concerned because they get the ball at the 30-yard line. Wheatfield got it at the 10. 3-14 remain in the third quarter, 7-7 seven, seven tie. Johnston to the 32-yard line. Second down. Let's see if Lewis and Porter has as much success uh, on this drive as they did the first. Both teams running very well with the football. And uh, that's surprising because neither team has thrown the ball much, so the defenses are, are really stacked up there tight. And to be able to move the ball that consistently on the ground, uh, of course, now we feel helped by several penalties there, face masking penalty and offside. Well, the touchdowns have been scored through the air. 76-yard touchdown and a 33-yard touchdown, or a 39-yard touchdown. Both passes. Another running play, good play by 54 for Niagara Wheatfield. Steve Boffman in he on the tackle. He came in there very quickly that time. You know, I had a chance at halftime to talk via phone to Michael Cassell from WLVL Radio. He's out doing a LaSalle Lockport game. And uh, he was surprised to find out that both scorers here in the first half were through the air because out there at Kenny Row Field today, uh, the temperatures and the wind have been so bad that they've kept the ball strictly on the ground. And uh, I had to explain to him that <laughs> that was the rule of thumb here as well. It was just two long pass plays were the only real passing attacks of the, of the half. Walker rolls. He's being chased by Cincinnati. He throws to Johnston. And they're go no good. No good. And Johnston Johnston's shaking up hurt, there. Yeah. Unfortunately, Bob, over here at Terry Harvey Field, they have asphalt uh, at, on both bench areas. Uh, on the Niagara Wheatfield side, it's because of the... Uh, the pole vaulting pit that they use the asphalt, uh, and that asphalt's very dangerous when you go out of bounds and you're tackled on that because you're, you're no longer hitting the soft uh, turf. You're coming down on uh, cement-like uh, hardness, and uh, there's been many injuries here, and I know that at LaSalle, they uh, cut the asphalt back on their sidelines because of that, that factor. It'll be fourth down. Bob, by the way, although it doesn't matter, what was the score in that LaSalle uh, game? Well, of course, it won't mean anything to people that are listening to our game, but uh, it was 2 nothing at halftime. LaSalle leading on a safety, and, of course, Lockport without their star quarterback, so they must have an inability to move the ball. Joe Farrell must be pitching a shutout. Look out, we may get roughing the kicker. We're going to get roughing the kicker as Gagne will return the ball, but this isn't going to count. See, now, I thought he was blocked into that, and, uh, and uh, that's something, though, Niagara Wheatfield's been been guilty of several times this year. That's a difficult call. The kicker, according to the official, was rough. That will be, well, let's see. They're going to have to mark that off. It was fourth and what? It'll be a first down, yeah. At one time, it wasn't an automatic first down, but they've changed the rules to make it an automatic first down. Of course, if the uh, defender gets his hand on the football, then there is no roughing the kicker call, but in that case... Uh, or if the runner moves, chance. yeah, if he starts or if to the, run, yeah. if the kicker starts to make an attempt to run the ball, that's well, a big penalty. Sure is. It gets the ball inside Niagara Wheatfield territory with a minute and 46 seconds remaining. There you see the signal indicating the roughing the kicker penalty. This is a typical Niagara Wheatfield-Lewis and Porter game. Uh, <laughs> 
many times th these games have been decided uh, by the yellow flag. And uh, it's often the team that makes the, the least amount of mistakes that it's a victor in these games. Now they come out of an I formation as they split two receivers out here and they run the ball. Is that LaBarbera? He gets the ball maybe a couple yards ahead to the, let's see where is that ball marked, at the 42? Yeah, there was a tackle in there by Steve Boffman. We'll remind our viewers that, uh, this, well, Prohaska just collapsed on the field, number yeah. three, the linebacker. I don't think we have a shot of him on the screen though, Bob, now we do, as Coach Cacciatore comes out to see him. He was running off the field and just went down. I think he turned an ankle. You see Coach Cacciatore and now Vincent and Krull come out to assist. Bob, what do you have on the show this uh, coming uh, Wednesday on Sports Wrap-Up? Well, we'll have, of course, our Athlete of the Week Award and uh, an interview with uh, some of the people that will be involved in that, that game next week out here between our Weefield Niagara Falls. And uh, we also hope to have a talk with uh, Coach Pete Lonergan, who uh, started the basketball season out there at NU. They opened up their camp, and uh, we'll be looking for an interesting season out of them once again. They carried Prohaska off like they carried Joaquin Handohar off last night in the World Series. They carried him off. He's going to the sidelines, and we'll see what the injury is, and we'll get back to you about that in a moment. Walker's the quarterback. The three backs are behind him, and they run to Johnston. And Johnston is stopped. After maybe a yard gain, it's going to be third down. Todd Treichler on that tackle. Let's see who they put in for Prohaska. He's been uh, their spiritual leader out there on defense. Uh, he gets them all up for the game, and we'll have to see if we can pick up who they put in that other linebacker position. 50, 39 seconds as the clock jumps very quickly. Remain in the third quarter of a 7-7 tie from Terry Harvey Field. In a big game as far as Section 6 Division 3 is concerned. This is Johnston, and Johnston is going to be very close to a first down. It'll be fourth if he doesn't make it. They're going to, they may have to measure. I'm sure they'll go for it. I would assume that they, they would go for it from here. We want to remind our viewers that uh, if this game ends in a 7-7 deadlock, we'll go into sudden death, uh, overtime. well, not sudden death overtime. Both, both teams get the ball on the 10-yard line. And uh, we'll continue to get the ball until somebody uh, comes out with a score. Uh, Bob, the third quarter's come to an end. We're going to take a commercial break. Prohaska's come back in the game, Bob. He's all right, number three. They carried him to the bench, but he has recovered very quickly. And he's back into this 7-7 tie. The ball's at the 37-yard line. It is fourth down and maybe less than a yard to go for a first down. Let's see if Walker goes straight ahead. Nope, he pitches back to LaBarbera, who's going to sweep the end. LaBarbera may score a touchdown. LaBarbera is going to score a touchdown. Greg LaBarbera scores a touchdown, and what happens there is when you get bunched up tight to stop the short run, everybody is in close, and LaBarbera, who has great speed, got outside, and I'll tell, I'll tell you, you. He showed a lot of speed getting away from Kaminska around that corner. Kaminska's no slouch, and uh, once he got outside there, it was just a foot race, and you're right. You bunch everybody up for that short yardage, they go wide, and there's no one left out there to defend. Just eight seconds have gone by in the fourth period, and LaBarbera has skirted the end, got out. It looked like Kaminska might have the angle, but he didn't get him. LaBarbera scored. Quirk will try a very important extra point. Luport has a six-point lead. They can make it seven. Now we got a penalty. It appears that every time a high school team lines up to kick an extra point, you get a penalty. One team or the other commits an infraction. Now let's see if they go for two here. Well, this is the second time that uh, this has happened in Niagara Wheatfield today. It'd be a very dangerous, not a dangerous, but it'd be a very gambling type call to go for two. If you went for two, you Big would. plays have been uh, the rule of thumb right? in this game. And the plays, just when you don't think a team's going to score a touchdown, they do. Quirk will attempt, Tomei will hold. Right out of the hole of Tomei, 21. 
There's a fake by, and they just missed blocking that. They didn't have to because it was no good. Well, that's a big miss. Quirk missed it. Off to the right, it's 13 to seven. And now let's see how Niagara Weefield responds to the challenge. This is the first time they've been down all year and uh, not what you would call great conditions to uh, launch a long uh, passing attack here, but uh, we still have 11.52 to go in this fourth quarter. This second half has really flown by with oh, yeah. this running game. It's been a very quick second half. Niagara Weefield is going to have to come off the floor now. They trail for the first time this year, did you say, Bob? This is the first time they've been behind in a ball game. All right. And when I mentioned before about this junior class not losing a, a football game, of course, that becomes contagious. You, you know, you build up a winning uh, attitude. And uh, this, I would imagine, is one of the few times th this junior class has ever been behind in a football game. Because I don't think last year on the JV level they were behind much at all. They were undefeated. I heard over the loudspeaker that the Niagara Wheatfield JVs beat the Luport JVs by a score of 12 to 6 in a game played earlier this day. As Kaminska will return it, LaBarber got down there very quickly to help out on a tackle. Got the ball to the 32 yard line where Niagara Wheatfield will have the football. King actually made the tackle, number 58. You know, if Lewis and Porter wins here today, it really throws the division in a three way race that would leave Niagara Wheatfield, Lewis and Porter, and Grand Island all with one loss. Lewis and Porter still has to play that very tough Grand Island team. And uh, it's unfortunate for Lockport they lost their quarterback because they'd still be in the race, and uh, Niagara Wheatfield has to play them the last game of the season. All right, now Niagara Weefield has to come back. They trail by six. They run the ball, and look at this Luport team. There you are, hopped up. They were waiting for the running back, Kaminska. They could have smelled the fact that he would carry the football. He carries it maybe 70% of the time. Yeah, so it's not hard to figure out who's going to get it. That was annoying in on the tackle, and uh, I would think that Niagara Weefield is going to have to open up a little bit with their passing game to loosen up this defense. It's unusual to, to say that a Niagara Weefield team has to loosen up and start throwing the ball. The last several years, we've, Niagara Weefield has been notorious for having passing attacks. Well, they got everybody spread out here to the right. Vincent and Krull, they got two receivers. They send Krull in motion. Segura juggles the ball, pitches to Kaminska. Kaminska is tackled after a three-yard gain. And we got a penalty flag down. I don't know who the official is on that other side, but he's seen a lot of uh, he's thrown a lot of flags today. It's a, a motion penalty against Wheatfield. And let's see if uh, Luport nullifies that or denies taking the penalty here. They may yeah, turn it down. Back. They're going to put him back. All right, the barber is still talking. They are really fired up. We have uh, Niagara Weefield on our screen, but the Lewis and Porter players are really. <laughs> the Luport defense is turning around to their comrades on the sidelines, and they're they're encouraging there each they other with shouts. Now. There yeah. they are, just really sky high. Well, they were the underdogs coming into this game, and for them to be up with only 10 minutes to go in the football game, those kids have to really, uh, you know, as you said, they have to be sky high because this is a, a tough, tough way to win a ball game out here on the uh, opposition's home field. They're going to give Niagara Weefield another down. They took the penalty, moved the ball back inside the 30-yard line. Segura is going to drop back in a shotgun. He's got a couple people. Split to the left and one to the right. Here comes a blitz. I think that man may have been offside. I don't see a flag. They got Segura at the 20-yard line. I'll tell you, either he anticipated the count exactly or they didn't catch him offside, but that blitz certainly is shaking up this Weefield passing game. Segura hasn't had too much time to throw the ball. Kastik actually made the tackle, but whoever was coming on the blitz must have had perfect timing because he looked like he was offside, but evidently the officials have a much better view. And no flag was thrown, so it's third down. Niagara Weefield's going backwards, and they have to go forwards. They're trailing by a score of 13 to 7. Again, Segura goes into the shotgun formation. He leaves two men to block for him. See if they can pick up that blitz. They quick kick, and it's not going to be an effective uh, factor because the ball's going to come back upfield. Well, that didn't work out for him at all. Not a bad call, but uh, the kick was only 11 yards, and uh, that gives Luport excellent field position. There you see Coach catch it tore along the sidelines. The, uh, the play call might have been fine. The execution didn't work out that well. 
They wanted to get out of the, of the large hole, I know, and they tried a quick kick, and Luport can uh, close the door here with another score. Walker, the quarterback, had LaBarber go for a touchdown moments ago. Look at the look at the offensive line for Luport take over the game. They just blew the Niagara Weefield defense back five yards on that running play. A touchdown here would ice it for Lewis and Porter. I, you know, I can't see Niagara Weefield coming back from two scores. Bartolome had some great blocking that time. We got 8:55 remaining in the football game. Luport has the lead and the football. They're at the 30-yard line of Niagara Weefield. Walker is the quarterback. He gives to his running back, Johnston. Johnston gets to the 28. It'll be, what, third down and about three. I'll tell you, Bob, it's imperative that Niagara Weefield stop them here because another first down would just run some more time off the clock, and the, and the clock really is the, the big factor in the game right now. Right, only 8.26 to go, and uh, unlike the professional game, 8.26 in a high school game where your running game and everything else eats up the clock, that, that goes by pretty quickly. Third down, Walker the quarterback, gives to Johnston, he's tripped up, he dives to the 25 yard line, he's gonna be just short, I think. No, they're gonna put his knee uh, touched at the 26 yard line, it'll be fourth down. You know, it seems like every time Lewis and Porter uh, needs that little extra, they're getting it. And uh, they're using all four downs to pick up the first down, right. which, uh, of course, really chews up that clock. And yet, when they scored on the last touchdown, it was uh, you know, a 30, 40-yard run around then. Very similar play to this, Bob. Tomei comes into the game. He'll bring the play in. This, they had a very similar situation, and they ran LaBarber around the end. He got outside and scored a touchdown. This time, he might go straight ahead. Now they're going to throw to Tomei, and it's incomplete. Uh, that, they used that play earlier in the game. Uh, they worked on... Silvaglia, to, Tomei got open, but the pass was incomplete. It stops the clock, which is a big factor. It stops the clock with 7.26, and it also gives Niagara Weefield the football. Yeah, and they're uh, not in what you would call a good field position, and uh, they're going to have to do something to counteract that blitz that Lewis and Porter has been putting on them. Uh, of course, Niagara Weefield, when they do throw the ball, usually have a lot of uh, spread formations and everything else, which means you don't have too many blockers for your quarterback. And even when they've had blockers in the backfield, that those linebackers for Luport have gotten in there and uh, just really given Segura fits. Segura's the quarterback. Time is running out on the Wheatfield Falcons if they want to keep their unblemished record alive. They fake and then throw uh, to Vincent, who looked like he might throw himself, but he runs the football. Uh, he got maybe to the 30-yard line. Bryce Luck made the tackle. Can't say enough for this Luport defense. Been outstanding. They've really done a great job. Although that was an unusual call, that pass play. That's a play that you would see a lot of times, as I mentioned, in the pros, where they throw the ball on third down. Or fourth down, as the case may be. Segura connected on a 74-yard touchdown strike to Vincent earlier in the game to give the Wheatfield their lead. And Luport has come back to score two touchdowns, and Kaminska is not going anywhere. He's got a yard or so, and now we got a little extra curricular activities going on. It's got to be tough down there on, uh, in the pits, as they call it right now. Those guys are really hitting. Boise, who had a penalty called against him earlier in the game, has played a very solid game for Lewis and Porter has, has their whole defense. Well, this is, a, this is a big third down play for that defense and offense right here, Bob. Moments ago, the quick kick Niagara Weefield did, and it went for 11 yards. Now they have a third down, and they have to go about six or seven yards for a first down. And Segura rolls out, and it looks like he's going to throw. He does. He overthrows. It's intercepted. And Niagara Wheatfield has turned over the football as Seguera overthrew his receiver and Porzik, 15, picked it off. Well, once again, and you can see the uh, Luport team and defense really is fired up now. That was a big interception. And uh, you can tell that uh, all the harassment that they've given Seguera rushed his throw on that one. He put that ball up and... Well, he opened the game with an interception. He threw the ball right into Frischlag's hands and now he's come back that ball might have been deflected, but it was overthrown. Porzik picked it off. We got a, a delay here. Or a momentary you got to fix delay. the chains. All right, they're gonna, that's what they're doing along the sidelines. 
We have five minutes and 48 seconds remaining. Newport Lancers are going to uh, try to pull off an upset here at Terry Harvey Field. In this traditional rivalry, the unexpected has been the has been commonplace, and it looks like it's going to take place again here today, unless we feel can bounce back. La Barber, who scored a touchdown earlier, the leading touchdown in the game, or give Luport the lead, runs the ball, gets maybe two yards. Boise was shaken up. Second down. You know, an interesting statistic, Bob, as far back as I can remember, Niagara Weefield has not defeated Lewis and Porter in what you would call a championship game or, or a game for first place. Uh, Has Niagara Weefield ever won the uh, division outright? They've never won it outright. And Bill Ross brought that up on my yeah, program last week. I thought I week. heard them say that last week. This is uh, Johnston. Look at Johnston. He's, He's going to score away. a touchdown. Yes, sir. Johnston just ran away from everybody. And he scored a touchdown. And this game looks like it's history. 31-yard run by Johnston. He broke a couple tackles and uh, looked like they had him at the line of scrimmage. And what surprises me is, uh, you know, once, I guess Wheatfield had everybody bunched up there to stop the run, but once he got past that initial surge, there was no one close to pulling him down. With five minutes left in the football game, Luport scored with eight seconds gone in this quarter, and they've come back to score another touchdown on a 31-yard run by Daryl Johnston. Once again, Quirk will attempt the extra point. Tomei will hold. It's 19 to seven, it could be 20. It is 20 to seven as Quirk drills it for the extra point. We're gonna take a commercial break. I tell you, Harry Lawler's happy, and so is the Luport student body, and also their football team. As you see, Pat Quirk prepare to kick off. His team has a 13-point lead with five minutes to play. And Niagara Wheatfield is going to have to pull a rabbit out of a hat to win this football game. First of all, they're going to have to run this kickoff back. If Quirk kicks it deep, he kicks it short. Casada picks it up. And he's going to be tackled out of bounds at the 37-yard line. And Luport will probably go into a deep prevent defense as we feel will probably put the ball in the air out I've, of a shotgun with Segura. I've been impressed with the Lewis and Porter offense, but uh, the key to this game has really been their defense. They've just shut down the Niagara Weedfield offense, which up to this game, Bob, uh, of course, you got the stats. 88 points. 88 yeah. points. They, you know, the fewest amount of points they scored in a game was 17. Uh, which means that you know they, they found that end zone quite a bit, and uh, except for that one long pass play, they they've really haven't come close to another score. Well, they seem to have discovered something at the half, Bob, off that left side of the Weefield line. They're really running that in that direction. That's crawl in motion. Segura fakes and throws, and he throws it to Porzik again. Porzik playing center field almost picked off his second pass in a row. Well, it was intended for Kaminska, but he had three guys all around him. And, uh, well, he here's, threw in the coverage, yeah. Here's a situation where Segura only a junior, and, and he's never been put in a situation where they had to come back like this, and I'm sure he's just trying to force the football in there and try to complete something. Well, in all fairness to Segura, he is really not getting very much time. I mentioned earlier in the game that a fly, a fly in the ointment, as far as we feel is concerned, might be their offensive line. They have been tested today. And Segura has had very little time to throw the football. When he did have time, he connected with Vincent for a touchdown. He doesn't have much time there as he runs out of the pocket. He's tackled. Quirk, who kicked the extra point, makes the tackle. It's third down. Time's running out. Four minutes and 11 seconds. We should be getting the four-minute signal momentarily. And for our viewers who are tu tuning in late, yeah, it's 20 to 7 in favor of Lewis and Porter. Uh, certainly a quiet Niagara Wheatfield crowd in, up here, not only in the uh, press box, but down in the stands. And uh, as I mentioned, and uh, it's come up 
several times throughout the years. Lewis and Porter has won every uh, big game that I can think of between the two teams. Harry Dickinson uh, picked the Wheatfield, you know, as the pigskin prophet. Yes. He may have some trouble with this. Well, game. he's lucky that wasn't on the actual chart, so it won't hurt his percentage. He may have to come up with a 14-point play here. Let's see if Segura can do something with the football. He's being, whoa, is he hit by Sonoyan? I don't know if we saw that or not. We got interference, but I'll tell you, Segura was decked by Sonoyan. And Sonoyan's the gentleman who put out El Maranto last week, correct, Bob? That's it. You got that right. And that's well, an interference penalty. He'll give Wheatfield a first down. Segura looks shook, you know, oh, shook up Oh, he really there. got belted. We didn't have it on our, on our picture or on our screen, but he really got leveled. First down for the Falcons. That was pass interference. I'm surprised Niagara Weefield hasn't tried any screens or anything to, to uh, offset that blitz. Mm -hmm. uh, they've really put pressure on him. And, uh, of course, that the defensive line, though, has, has done an outstanding job pressuring Segura along with the linebackers, yeah. not only the linebackers. Screens are reverses away from that tremendous pursuit that they're getting. I mean, they're just, they're just teeing off against that offensive line. Here they come. There goes Segura. He's got a little bit of time, and then he loses it. Now he runs out He's of got a man wide open. Got level again. This is picked off by Reed, I believe. Reed may go for a touchdown. Reed is going to score unless Segura can knock him out of bounds, and he does. Jimmy Segura makes the save on Reed, who picks off the pass, number 55. Dave Reed picked it off. Lewiston Porter has been awesome in this half. Wow. 322. They may score again here. I can't quite pick up who the number is. I think it was Todd Treichler, uh, who was wide open down the sidelines uh, when Segura got pressured there. The defender started to come up to hit to, to get Segura, and, and Treichler was open long, but he threw underneath that. And uh, this is it. I, I can't conceive Niagara Weefield coming back from this situation. I'm sure right now they're just going to play for pride and try to keep him out of the end zone. The offensive line has made one heck of a difference as the Lewis and Porter team has dominated the line of scrimmage in the second half. Johnston is just running over people. He just, run over, he just ran over about four people. No longer are they running away from anybody, they're running right at them. They got the ball to the 11 yard line. Well, this really throws division three up for grabs. And of course, if I'm not mistaken now, if St. Niagara, we feel Lewis and Porter and Grand Island all end up with one loss. I believe it's the fewest amount of points given up in the division. I think so, yeah. And so this, this would be a big score here. Oh, yeah. Because that would be 28, 27 points, whatever, given up by Niagara Wheatfield. That was a good defensive play by the Falcons. That time, the defense beat the offensive blocking patterns. And Barr made the tackle. Yeah, you wouldn't even be surprised to see Luport try a field goal to get points. I don't know if, if they're, they're, if they're thinking if they're that thinking on the sidelines, but you know. uh, last year I, I was told that it would come down to uh, points given up in the division because you did have a possibility where Niagara Falls, Lockport, Niagara Weefield would end up with one loss. Well, Luport has won 13 of the 18 previous contests. They're trying to make it 14. La Barbara, is, what a block by Di Bartolomeo, and it's a touchdown for La Barbara. What a block by Di Bartolomeo. He just leveled Krull. Oh, he murdered Krull on that block. And La Barbara scored the touchdown. I tell you, when he turned a corner, I, I saw no way he was going to score with three black shirts in front of him, and he made it in the end zone. Not only a great block, but a great individual effort oh, there. Oh, yeah, it was a great run by La Barbara, but very often the blockers do not get the credit. We're going to take a commercial break as Harry Lawler comes on the field. Well, you would think, as you see Harry Lawler come off the field with the score 26 to, 26 to 7, that they would go for two here because they would want points, as Bob was talking about the final standings. But Quirk will attempt the extra point out of the hole of Tomei. High pass from center. And, oh, I'm sorry, that was Daryl Johnston who kicked it. That's good. They switched on us. 
Yeah, they're experimenting now, huh? They got a 27 to seven lead and they let Johnston kick it. Well, no one would have predicted this final score. No one from even the more Wheatfield. Right. Well, I don't think even uh, Chet Przlecki, who's standing behind us, would have predicted a 27 to seven final. <laughs> As Chet said, yes, we show up. Well, Outstanding job today by Lewis and Porter. Well, you got to give them a lot of credit. They they came back after a, just an awful game against Canisius to play very well against Niagara Falls High School, and to, and today they look like a very very solid football team, both offensively and defensively. Of course, now you're going to have people asking, Bob, how good is Niagara Wheatfield? Yeah. They were undefeated coming into this game. They suffered a big loss. How, you know, how good are they actually uh, going to do throughout their entire well, season? Well, that's what makes high school football. It's unpredictable. You never know. Look at Cork kick the ball out of the end zone. Everything's going right for Lou Port Sonoyan almost knocked three guys in the end zone on the block on that kickoff. You know, this has to be one of the, the biggest victories for Lewis and Porter over an Niagara Wheatfield team uh, in this series. Uh, possibly the only other game that would uh, outweigh this was that big 29-25 game, uh, the final game for Pete Rayo as a coach, in which they defeated Niagara Wheatfield for a share of the title. Mm -hmm. But uh, you didn't have as much on the line uh, in many of the other contests as you did today. And like I said, for Luport to come right in here to Terry Harvey Field and walk away with this game in this final quarter. Yeah, the setting was perfect. It looked like a Niagara Wheatfield victory. I honestly thought a Niagara Wheatfield would win the football game. I don't make any pretenses about that. I'm very surprised by the score, but Lewis and Porter has done it with a great deal of efficiency, I'll tell you. Segura's pass is blocked. It's now a lateral. No, it's incomplete. It's not going to be a lateral. That was going to be a, uh, a throw down field here to Kaminska, too. Haggerty was going to throw the ball down to number 40. That was going to be a flea flicker. Up. Yeah. Might have gone, too. Nobody was coming up, covering Kaminska on that. But the defenders got their hands up, which is what you have to do. And uh, I'll tell you, Bob, I, I hate to harp on this point, but it's just, to me, in the second half, the, the line of scrimmage has been controlled by Lewis and Porter. They just can do whatever they want. And really, you can't evaluate the running backs, Kaminska or even Segura's passing, because they have had no time at all. They just cannot really get their offense underway because they've been rushed so often. Krull goes in motion. Segura throws the same play to the other side. And Haggerty throws, and it looks like it's going to be picked off, but it dropped right in front of the defender, Porzik, number 15. Well, that was the exact play that they were going to try and run at this time. They just switched sides, yeah. You know, uh, the Buff Living News has a high school football poll, which is, uh, has caused a lot of excitement in the area. It gives teams something to root for. Niagara Wheatfield was number three going into this week. Uh, Lancaster was number two, and uh, they got hammered by uh, Jamestown. And uh, Timon and St. Joe's played, so it was conceivable that Wheatfield could have ended up on top of that poll had they won today. But after today's uh, loss, I'm sure they'll drop right out of the top ten. There's a running play on third down. I have to question those polls, though, Bob. I wonder how many games the staff at the Buffalo Evening News actually sees. Well, it's actually taken by a, a group of coaches vote on the, on the poll. Is that the way they do it? I wasn't But clear. I think it's, it's more of a reflection of consistency than actual, uh, you know, it's tough to say that uh, any team that's ranked number one could beat every team in, in western New York, but I, they really reward consistency in undefeated teams. Yeah, because high school football is just very, very unpredictable, as witnessed here today. And look at that kick. Comes way downfield nice into Lewis and Porter ter territory. And you recall earlier in the game that roughing the penalty kick, or roughing the kicker, kicker penalty, penalty. Uh, was a factor. Blueport kept the football. They scored a touchdown. You can see Harry Lawler talk to quarterback Jimmy Walker. Uh, they're in the catbird seat. They have a 20 to nothing lead with a minute and 15 seconds to go, and who would have believed it? You know, when you're watching at home and you look at uh, your television screen and the sun and everything else, it looked like it was a nice day out here, but uh, <laughs> the fans and the players have to be a bit numb by this time, though I'm sure the Lewis and Porter players can't even feel the temperature. There's a running play that nets a couple yards for Lou Porter as the time runs out in this football game, and I'll tell you another thing that's emptied out very quickly, Bob, is this press box. Yeah. <laughs> there are very that's few sure. people who have... Uh, 
except the timers and the scorekeepers. The the that gives me a chance to thank Fred Barone, uh, who does an outstanding job out here at Niagara Weefield, and also the uh, Section 6 uh, chairman for the playoffs out of Rich Stadium, uh, which, of course, all this will lead up to. He supplied us with hot coffee and donuts. He does an excellent job up here for our staff up in the press box. There's a running play to DeBartolomeo. It'll be it's third down. Break. There's 23 seconds remaining. We're going to go out and see a game tonight between Niagara Falls and Canisius, and I can't, I can't imagine how good Canisius must be. What's hard to believe was Canisius had yet to win a game before they beat Lewis and Porter, and uh, I'm sure this is not the same Lewis and Porter team that we saw. I guess today. not. A 28-0 loss to Luke. Uh, to Canisius, a 27-7 victory here today in a stunning upset over Niagara Wheatfield, and they throw the Division Three Section Six Conference into real turmoil. Uh, we'll have to wait that Lockport score. You can see, well, now you're gonna look at the two teams joining and at the center of the field to shake hands as this game comes to an end, and I'd like to thank Bob Kaczynski for joining me this afternoon, all the cooperation we received up here at Niagara Wheatfield, and Bob, what do you think? Well, Bob, just, uh, you know, the, it's going to be Holland and Lewiston tonight. A uh, big victory. And uh, you got to take your hat off to Coach Harry Lawler, the brand new varsity football coach at Louport. I talked to him earlier this week. I talked to him about getting his kids mentally ready to play. He said, don't worry, that'll take care of itself. He was worried about the technical aspects, and I think he devoted a lot of time to the technical aspects because they certainly had this Niagara Wheatfield uh, defense figured out, and their defense stymied uh, the potent Wheatfield offense. And just a great game for Lewiston Porter. And, uh, of course, I've got to feel uh, a bit down for uh, Coach Cacciatore and Niagara Wheatfield because uh, it seems like they always come out on the short end of this rivalry. And uh, that's a big loss for them today. And I mentioned those kids for um, the Wheatfield Juniors have yet to suffer defeat, and they suffered a bad one today. Well, Newport came back with 20 unanswered second-half points and ran away with this football game, as you see. A very disheartened Niagara Wheatfield team leave the field with their head coach, Armin Cacciatore. The final score, once again, from Terry Hyrie Field, Lewiston Porter's Lancers 27, Niagara Wheatfield 7. We'd like to thank Freddie Carolandrelli and all the staff, the sponsors, Judge Hasley and Joe Pilater. We'll be back next week with Niagara Wheatfield against Niagara Falls High School. And this is Bob Laurie thanking you very much for your time this time. Until next time, good night. <laughs>